Hello, everyone. Welcome to Broadway's Calling. Oh, my God. This has been crazy because you'll see that I'm in Andrea's kitchen from Broadway Bite. I am in California, you guys, and I'm like double mass still because we're together, but we're still socially distancing. And this is the episode that I, it was so hard to write. It was so hard. I just didn't want to do it. I mean, I'm just not ready for this to be over yet. And this is crazy. I mean, because we are in one place, we're not isolated like we normally are. That means new wires, new lights, new setups. Um, we have three computers going. And so we hope that everything will continue and work. But here you are. Welcome into the inside world of the interwebs and having a live show on YouTube. And uh, thank you for coming over here. And thank you for coming here for all of uh, this past year. Um, this show uh, was launched one year ago and it started out, um, it was going to be a coffee table book. And I guess since you're on the other side of the internet, uh, I can take off this mask and talk to you. Uh, well, we started this as, I started it as a coffee table book um, idea. And uh, I don't know, we didn't know how long it would, would last or you know, if people would be interested. And, but we just wanted to connect to everyone during the lockdown. Well, as people you know, started to get out and about, I thought we would just fade away. But you came back every Sunday, and I kept getting messages about how Broadway's calling was something that many of you looked forward to. So we kept going. And oh, there were so many stars and cool stories that I wanted to get that I'm like, well, I don't want to stop because I wanted to get this person and that person and the, the new young stars and some of the Tony winners. And we got a lot of them. And we even got a chance to do some holiday specials, which was fantastic. Um, I had been interviewing my castmates that I had worked uh, with uh, about where they were when they got the call the very first time to be on Broadway. And I started that when I was in Ghost. Uh, so that was around 2011, 2012. And I was writing down everyone's story, but it was two years ago while I was doing My Fair Lady that I was chatting in the green room with the legendary Tony Award winning Rosemary Harris. Oh man, well, everyone knows. I mean, her career has spanned almost 70 years. I'm, there she is in 1952, just a bombshell. And she's been on stage, of course, and film, including becoming a fan favorite with Spider-Man as uh, Aunt May. And there she is as Professor Higgins' mom, Mrs. Higgins, in the phenomenal production directed by Bartlett Shear of My Fair Lady. Well, she had come to replace uh, Diana Rigg. And she's 92, y'all. 92 years old, and she never missed a performance. In fact, she wasn't even going to miss a performance when uh, she had a little outpatient surgery, surgery, and her doctor said to her, he says, no, you just should rest, you know, but she rested a couple days, and then she was back on her feet. Uh, I mean, Rosemary is spry, she's quick-witted, um, and still wearing those heels is Mrs. Higgins. I mean, she is no joke. Well, I asked her, because we would have these conversations in the green room over there, the Vivian Beaumont at Lincoln Center, and uh, we talk about things, and you know, I love stories. As you can tell, if you watch this show, I love stories about the theater, and to have someone, uh, really, she encompasses all the history of our, our of our business. Uh, so many things from Olivier all the way up, you know, to Toby McGuire. And so I asked her if she minded if I taped our, our conversation because her Broadway, her Broadway's calling story, it spans two continents, y'all, an ocean. And it includes the original director of My Fair Lady, Moss Hart, as well as the future queen from Once Upon a Mattress, Jane White, Cliff's dad from the Cosby show, Earl Hyman, which there's a picture, if you check on the internet, he looks just like that actor from, uh, what is the show, Bridgerton? Uh, I don't know how to say his name, Reggie Jean Page. 
if you look, I mean, they are like the same person. It's sort of phenomenal. But also uh, what uh, Rosemary got to see firsthand were the, um, the inequities of touring uh, with a cast of blacks and whites south of Washington, D.C. Uh, but she she just shared all of these stories with me. Uh, one time, I guess, um, they when they were in the hotel, the uh, African-American actors, Jane White and Earl Hyman, who are both fair-skinned, but had to stay in another hotel. And she was, you know, she couldn't believe she was seeing that. Um, also, they were in a restaurant, and um, I guess the waiter asked, uh, Jane White, also, who's very fair-skinned, and if you've seen her, you swam the moat in Once Upon a Mattress, if you've seen the television version. Um, uh, but they asked Jane White, they said, was she Indian? And um, as in Native American. And she said, no, I'm I'm colored. And that was the word then. And they said, well, you can't eat here. And so Rosemary just recounting all of these stories to me. And it was just fantastic. And it led up to her sharing her Broadway's calling story. But before I actually, because I have the recording, but before I share that, I wanted to tell you how excited that I am to be out of my apartment in New York City. I'm in, I'm in Andrea's kitchen. Oh my God, this is where all the Broadway bites, tasty treats were. I mean, this is absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to see if there's a crumb or something from something that Andrea has made. Um, but when we began last July, I thought that maybe this would be a podcast, even though I had no idea what a podcast was, but I heard of it. Um, I only had my iPhone and a dream. And um, but it was Julie Garnier, um, who is our tech director, my birthday twin and a fellow performer. She had started to produce video podcasts or vodcasts, starting with the Rosie O'Donnell Actors Fund special at the top of the pandemic, which they raised so much money for the Actors Fund. And she said that if I wrote a script, she would guide me through the technical aspects of doing a show, you know, where you can see me. There I am, you can see me. <laughs> well, I started, um, I said, I don't know how to interview. So I started with uh, a brother from another mother, Phineas Newborn the Third, And we had been in Cats together and a show called Walls, which is how I uh, ended up in Los Angeles, uh, the first place. And uh, the interview with Phineas, of course, was easy because we've known each other for decades. But the real test, that would come on July 26, when I would have my very first guest, and it was none other than three-time Tony Award winner. And if you saw the premiere show, you know it was Miss Glenn Close. Well, Glenn and I had bonded raising money for Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS while doing Sunset Boulevard. And this is what she will do <laughs> to raise money for charity. Check this out. But there is a great video of no. the auction, <laughs> of the auction. And I, I let's see if Julie has <laughs> that video and she can show everyone what Glenn Close will do to help raise money. <laughs> money. <laughs> Oh, thank you. That was so much fun. Not only. Oh, man. Well, that was fantastic. Uh, you know, the cast of Sunset Boulevard uh, should be applauded because uh, together we were able to raise over half a million dollars and we got a plaque and everything. Bette Midler, who was starring in Hello, Dolly at the time, gave us a plaque and it was so exciting. We even um, had an ambush with um, with the cast of Hamilton because Glenn was selling her lashes. The cast of Hamilton 
made a a poster and said Glenn Close will sell her lashes for cash and they were auctioning that off. Well, we didn't do Tuesday nights. So we just went over there and while they were doing their auction, we arranged with their stage manager to sneak through the back and we came onto the stage. We were like, wait, we were like dressed like Glenn Close's Secret Service. And she came in because you know she's a boss. If you saw her on the Oscars, you know Glenn Close is a boss. When she walked in there and she said, well, wait a minute. If you are using a picture of me to raise money over here in Hamilton, then you have to give us some of the money. Well, they did. And it helped us raise $509,000 for Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS. And it was just, it was phenomenal. Um, now our show, Broadway's Calling, we haven't been able to raise uh, half a million dollars, but we have been able to raise some money and uh, we've been able to donate and deliver toys, which was, that was very exciting. And it's really be because of the generosity of all of you guys out there. And it's been fantastic because we've gotten to send checks to uh, Bring Change to Mind, which was Glenn's charity. Um, also Feed America, Feeding America with PV Herman, uh, Cancer Community, Donna Murphy, putting on production. That was something that Andrea and Al um, have something to do with. Um, Stockings with Care, Randolph House, and of course, the Actors Fund. Uh, now we are big fans of the Actors Fund over here. And Brian Stokes Mitchell and his wife, Allison, were here for our Valentine's Day show. And they reminded us that the Actors Fund helps every person in the entertainment from the ushers to the backstage crew, to the the, uh, the janitors who work in the theater, um, the box office staff, as well as the performers. It's not just for actors and we are gratefully collecting for them one last time since this is our farewell show. Um, and you can send your donations uh, either via Venmo or PayPal, and that's Venmo at Lance C Roberts, or at PayPal, it's paypal.me forward slash Broadway's Calling. And uh, we have a long way before we get to half a million dollars or even what they've been raising over there at Stars in the House, uh, which also donate over there uh, because their show is still ongoing, uh, Seth's show. And, uh, but every little counts. And we really, we really are excited to, you know, just be one of the vessels to get money uh, to help all the people in need. And um, I hope you consider using the info that we, we uh, have here for the Venmo or the PayPal. Now, Julie and I have only been able to produce this show isolated from each other, but we are in the same spot far away from everyone. Now, you have to remember this before Julie comes onto the camera is that we have been scrambling and Julie had to load all the, the stuff into the show. So we're not like all like all the way ready, camera ready. And um, so um, um, if we can close the door because Julie is going to uh, join us and we're gonna make sure we don't have any feedback because we've never done this in the same spot. So you're here seeing what it's like all at the same time. So ladies and gentlemen, Broadway is really calling my co-host and my technical director, Andrea Boyer, and Julie Garnier. Hey, there's Andrea. She's in her kitchen. There's Julie. Hey. I'm by the pool. Can you guys hear me okay? I can hear you and I can see all the comments. Um, Anastasia from Germany is here. I see Eileen Graf um, who thanked us for our constant support for the Actors Fund. And uh, Eileen and I actually met like 30 years ago working for the Variety Children's Foundation, which uh, she was um, helping to to run. And that was like, that was like my first time ever getting uh, in, uh, being a part of a charity. And it's just so much, you know, they say that Americans, we are the most philanthropic in the entire world. And it really is true. I mean, it is so phenomenal. Um, well, I just wanted to see if there were any more uh, things because I hadn't been able to look at the the comments, but well, Julie, you might have seen them. What were you going to yeah, say? Well, our very, very first guest, Phineas, is here. 
Oh my God. Hey, Phineas. Hey, Phineas. <laughs> that was such a fun, like, test run of this show to see if it would actually work. Oh so, my goodness. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. awesome. And there's Andy Skirna, who is our webmaster. Um, so um, he, he probably just sent out an email blast. So tell all your friends to come on over to uh, YouTube. Um, and the URL, where do they go, uh, Julie, if, they, if they're looking for the show and they want to like tell people it's youtube.com excuse me forward slash broadway's calling that's it tell them to come over here because we're not on facebook live today um leave a little message for people say y'all gotta see the farewell episode because coming up not only will i share the rosemary harris tapes which i feel like you know is so clandestine <laughs> it's like i have the rosemary it's like the, it's like the federal papers isn't it it's like oh <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, who's got the rosemary tapes it's like water, it's like watergate <laughs> we have them so uh julie oh there's brett hello brett i'm actually on your coast there's elena waters um who has been a guest on the show um and also was in uh, a broadway star um and um wait you know what i don't know did i even mention that we uh we sent money over to covenant house because i was like reading so fast but i know when uh the cast of sister act was here elena charles brown and tony award winner victoria clark i like to say that before anyone who has a tony award i still think it's like the coolest thing ever i mean it's like i know people go awards don't mean much but it's just a part of the history and I love theater history and I love Broadway history. So if someone has that, I'm going to put that in front of their name, just like Charles Browns, who I've known for over 20 years, um, since we did Ragtime together like a long time ago, um, he is a Tony nominee. So that's also exciting. But Covenant House, and that was, they were so thankful. They like, I'm on the mailing list now. I get, the, that's the one between the Actors Fund, I was already on the mailing list, but now the Covenant House, I really feel like I'm part of it because, you know, after we sent the money, they send me all kinds of things and I get updated on what's going on. And it's, it actually is inspiring to know that, you know, our few thousand dollars is, is helping someone. And it's, it's very exciting. So we hope to do that also again for the Actors Fund. Now I see Andrea over my shoulder. Hi, Andrea. <laughs> Are you guys are you guys socially distancing or like can you get a little closer, Andrea? Are you guys just you're, you're distancing? Yes, we're we're distancing a bit, although we've been in each other's pod, you know, for a while, but we're still, yeah. you know, because they no one knows what's going on. So we're doing everything just cautiously, you know, we're we're putting our toes into the water, not as easily as you can, Julie, because you're actually by the pool. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> lounging, you know, by the but you know, under the California sun by the pool here just like hanging out <laughs> just lounging by the pool while i run a show you know well, my job doesn't suck <laughs> it doesn't suck it doesn't suck and i know that your dog pepper is somewhere in here yeah, she's and roaming around i'm gonna grab her later and pop her into the with, show which she's with uh jackson yeah. who uh Jax is here uh andrea and al's dog so they're yeah. having a play date today so <laughs> everybody is coming uh today and Andrea, I have a question for you because Anastasia wants to know what you're cooking up today. And I was going to save it for later, but since Anastasia is asking, we might have to talk about it. <laughs> well, I'm cooking up something very special for today. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a honey roasted apple crostinis. Mm. ricotta. Well, yes. And is someone going to run one out to me by the pool? Like, who's, uh, who's the pool boy that's going to bring me my food? I don't know. Maybe uh, you might have to get up from your station yeah. by the pool and come into the kitchen with us. You know, you don't need a mask if you stay on the other side of the counter. You know, mm. <laughs> or you we'll just be we'll just be a little Lance sandwich, me and Andrea. Oh yeah, a lamb sandwich. Wait a minute, this is a family show. We're in the family hour. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I guess how, that's how families are made. <laughs> well, Don't wait. go teaching people stuff just now. <laughs> I know, you know, we're learning the birds and the bees. Well, it's very exciting because I'm usually, it, just like many of you are probably like when Andrea is cooking and like say, mm, I just want to taste it. So I am thrilled to actually be in the kitchen so that I can actually 
taste something and watch Andrea do this in real time while we're doing the show and celebrating all of the stars that have been on the show over the last year. Um, and uh, But before you, you uh, get into the kitchen, Andrea, how are you feeling about the farewell show? Lance, I cannot tell a lie. I'm really sad. I'm oh. bittersweet, but I'm incredibly honored to have been a part of this. Like seriously, I've been uh. like trying to pull back the tears. Oh. But I'm very hopeful for the future of the show and for all our people that are watching us and our viewers that you're gonna see, like Lance likes to call it, Broadway's calling 2.0. 2.0. So that's what I'm hoping for. Yes. <laughs> Oh, uh, Elena says, Lance's sweet tooth is going to be so happy with Andrea's goodness. Lucky. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> and uh, uh, is that Dan who says, uh, the Gloss 56, thanks to all three of you for your wonderful support of the theater. Hope we get to see you again so sometime. And we hope to see you too when we're performing live. Make sure you say hello and say, hey, we're friends from before Broadway's Calling. But it's always, it, it will be, I think, exciting uh, to uh, actually talk to people live after seeing people across the internet when we're doing shows. Um, and for those of you who didn't know, yes, Broadway is coming back starting September 14th. In fact, there is one show already rehearsing and, um, and I think they start previews in a couple of weeks and Bruce Springsteen is already performing. So you can get tickets to that if you're in New York. And then the show that I was in when we shut down, they have talked, spoken to us and we're supposed to start September 13th. But as you know, the protocols for COVID they change every day. So um, it's it's touch and go. And the, the producers want to make sure that, you know, they can get the audiences in safely. They can get not only the actors uh, performing, but uh, safely on the stage, but also the backstage crew. We have to make sure that everybody has room to do these shows and to be safe, you know, as we move into this next phase. So uh, we'll keep updating everybody either on our website, because uh, we do have a website for Broadway's Calling, and uh, we'll update, you know, with the shows. And also every once in a while, uh, we will update on the YouTube channel right here. So I hope that either you've been subscribing or you ring the bell or you, uh, what is that? We have to click the bell. I already, I've been singing a click that bell song so long that I forgot. It was I was thinking ring the bell because when I came over to Andrea and Al, it says ring on the bell. So I was thinking, oh. that, but I was thinking ring the bell. But no, yeah. you gotta click that bell. Click 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 that bell. Click click. Come on, click that bell. Click click. Oh, I got dancing people backstage. Click that bell. Click click. Click that bell, <laughs> click, click, oh my goodness. <laughs> we even have an audience, okay? It's an audience of two, but it's the <laughs> smallest peanut gallery you've heard. Uh, but say, oh. say, say something. <laughs> That's um, uh, Julian, uh, my manager, and uh, Andrea's husband, Al, who is our secret crew, who gets everything set up for the Broadway Bite section. And then for our in-person section, um, Al has helped us too. So we do have an audience, so who knows what I'll perform today. But um, uh, I just wanted to say, Andrea, I've enjoyed your recipes from afar and I've waited patiently <laughs> to taste one of your creations. So I hope that you're ready to whip up something in real time that I can sample. I'm gonna get right to it. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you in a All right, we'll see you, Andrea. Um, sorry, Julie, that uh, you can't be in the kitchen. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed I don't get to smell this as it's happening, but <laughs> I, I can watch uh, this little window right here. I've got a direct view to you. Oh, you so can. So I can actually, yeah, hi. I, yeah. Hi. I can see you. So <laughs> I can see what's going on. <laughs> well, we'll be make we'll make sure that you know we can either run some to you, you can run over here, or you know, 
Al I'll pop in there at some out, point. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can well, strap I'll, one onto the back of my dog and send her out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have her. She'll, she'll be like the Wells Fargo dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see you guys later because we want to talk about all of the great stars who have been here and some of the funny moments. And um, this last year was made possible by over 50 Broadway stars. I cannot believe when I was going down the list, I'm like, oh my God, there was so many people who have here yeah. have been here and so many share their stories about getting their first call to be on Broadway, how it changed their lives, the friends and lovers that they met and the lifelong fans that they would also meet. And all of our stars, well, almost all of us stars. Now, this is full disclosure. Not only do we have like the secret Rosemary Harris tapes, um, one of our stars did a Broadway tour of a show, but did not actually appear on Broadway. And she was like doing, uh, oh, we know it's a she, uh oh, but she was doing one of our specials and it was a different format. So I wasn't asking, you know, where were you the first time when you got the call to be on Broadway? So it never came up, um, but I've known her forever and I just wanted her to be on the show. Um, but I think we have conjured up a Broadway call because this particular star will be making her Broadway debut. Now here's a clue. This fall, alongside Norm Lewis, Natasha Yvette Williams, and Michael Urey in the new Douglas Lyons comedy, Chicken and Biscuits. Yes, she is going to be in that Broadway show. Now, she can tell us all about that next year on Broadway's Calling 2.0. Now, any of you who have an inkling which of our stars from one of our specials just got a Broadway call? Is anybody out there? Can you figure it out? Because we've had a lot of people. Um, I don't think Andrea and Julie could have figured it out um, unless I would have told them. So it's it's hard, but I gave you some good clues. So go Googling and see if you can figure it out. And just leave it in the chat. And if you're new to the show, like I said, please subscribe. It's free. And if you, if you subscribe, you're going to make us look fancy on the YouTube, get them like, oh, look at people subscribing to Broadway's calling, and we'll really, really be thankful for that. And like I said, click that bell, more important than ever, because we won't be here every single week. And the bell will remind you when we have something new for you, because, you know, I might run into somebody on the street and I might have to just say, hey, listen, um, do you want to do a quick little interview, man on the street style? And um, I'll upload it. So, and you, if you click that bell, it'll say, oh, we got some new stories for you. Our winter holiday special was the snowball. Now, even though our entire cast was under 21 years old, every last one of them had appeared on Broadway at least once. And I really, I, I just, these kids are so wonderful and, and just respectful and, you know, along with their great talent. And I really look forward to seeing what these young actors are gonna do in the coming years. And maybe they'll turn out and have a long career like Grease's Barry Pearl, who started out in Oliver on Broadway. Um, but I like to say thank you to those kids. Thanks for sharing your talent, Teshi Thomas, Eli Tokish, Benali, Fambrini, Charlotte Rose, Ian Saracini, Marquise Neal, Alex Dreyer, and Noah Marlowe. Now, not quite as young as those kids, but bursting onto the scene are a new young breed of talent. We're talking Mike Bortella and Jonlyn Saxer, Christy Altamere, Alicia Delorier, uh, Josh Breckenridge, Brian Terrell Clark, and Tony nominees, Lily Cooper and Charles Brown, as well as one of my buddies where we did Sondheim Saturday night together, Newsies, Ben Fankhauser. Well, he even, he left us with some fun music where uh, he was playing Barry Mann in the tour and on Broadway of Beautiful. So I challenged him to see just how many songs he knew that Barry had written. So uh, Barry Mann. Yes and Cynthia Weil have probably written, like they, they've written so many top 40 songs. Oh yeah. And then I have a challenge for you. Go on. Yeah, <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Don't be that nervous. I wanna know how familiar you are with the Barry Mann songs. So I will just put the titles up on the screen and you just have to sing the titles. And 
as a further challenge to all of our listeners out there, I say for everyone that Ben gets correct, we throw in a dollar towards Covenant House. Yes, I love it. Yeah, you like this? All right, okay. So are you ready, Ben? Yes, let's, let's hope I <laughs> okay. my man. All right, somewhere out there. Somewhere out there, someone saying a prayer. Woo! Oscar. That's yes. why I them an Oscar. Yeah. All right. We got to get out of this place. We got to get out of this place. If it's the last thing we'll ever do. <laughs> All right. Now, this was one I know you know because you actually did it in the show. <laughs> Who put the bump? Let's see if I can do this here. The bump in the bump, a bump, a bump. Who put the ram in the ram, a lamb, a ding dong? <laughs> Just some of the best lyrics. <laughs> One girl, Kayla Johnson, says she's crying. So am I. I think this is great. All right. Blame it on the bossa nova. Which appears in beautiful as a scene change music. Yes. Like little... Yeah. Very, very smart. Okay, now here's one, and you have to also do the voice of the singer. Sometimes when we touch. Sometimes when we touch. <laughs> nerdy right, nailed it, nailed it. All right, now if you can do the voice of this one, really, I think everyone has to give $2 for this one. Oh, God. Dolly Parton's Here You Come Again. Here come again. Woo! Da, 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 da. All right. <laughs> My country okay. uh, Just once. I don't know this song, Lance. I do not know this one. Just once. Can we try to make you do do? That, I don't know the words, but I know that's the melody. It does sound sound familiar? Sound familiar. Yep. The hook. Okay. Good, good thing you got $2 for the other song because you didn't get I know it. <laughs> Now, how about this one? You've lost that love and feeling. You've lost that love and feeling. Whoa, that love and feeling. <laughs> Make your own kind of music. Make your own kind of music. Sing your own kind of songs. Oh Beautiful. No, wait a minute. That's only nine. Um, uh, wait. Oh, 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 I got one for you. You ready? Yeah. I'm going to give you a little intro. Hey, they say the neon lights are bright on Broadway. On Broadway. Yeah. They say there's always magic in the air. On Broadway. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh man. Well, we love having Ben Fankhauser on the show as a guest. And also he was on our Halloween special. And I, I've uploaded that onto our YouTube channel. You gotta see Ben Fankhauser sing Feed Me. <laughs> it's a new version. And it's it's oh man, it's, it's exciting. Now I got so many messages. When people would say, I can't believe that person was on Broadway. And uh, but we had some of these people on the show, and we're talking Will and Grace's Eric McCormack, he stopped by Six Feet Under's Lauren Ambrose, Tony nominee Lauren Ambrose for My Fair Lady, Let's Make a Deal's Wayne Brady, Lawn Orders S. Apatha Merkerson, who she said, it's e pay the not epitha, apatha, e pay the Okay, you got it. Oh, long E, long A, short ah. e pay the <laughs> I love it. And Pee Wee Herman's, well, Pee Wee Herman. So Paul, he dropped by, and uh, because the Pee Wee... Uh, Herman show had celebrated our 10 year anniversary and also Mad TV's Phil Lamar and Josh Meyer who were in the show and a very special guest Miss Yvonne Lynn Stewart was here and it was very very important to me since Paul is the reason that I got my Broadway on stage debut in 2010 after a 30 year absence 
And um, I did get to tell that story when Andrea and uh, Julie took over the show uh, during Black History Month and they interviewed me and I got to tell my story. And, um, and Paul is the reason why I've gotten to be on Broadway low these 10 years until the, the pandemic, but I'm forever uh, grateful to him. But he had some other funny stories and um, here's a video clip of Paul Rubens on Broadway's Calling. Broadway, I would love to know, like, when did you finally get the call that you were going to be taking the show to Broadway? Now, you know what? I'm confused hearing both of those people. And I want to just check with you because you would know this and I can't mm -hmm. can remember anything. Um, so I thought that we knew we were going to Broadway the whole time. Like, I thought that the Broadway run was kind of set up when we did the show at in Los Angeles. Is that not right? Maybe you knew, but the rest of us didn't know. <laughs> I think they told. Well, you know what? Is, I was gonna. I, I wait out whether to whether to say any of what I'm about to say. Uh oh. Da, da, da. You know, I think you know what some of this is going to be, and this is all just. It's just ironic because I'm on Broadway's calling, and, uh -huh. and I have to just be honest and say, like Broadway just was so over my head. I mean, mm -hmm. it was just so kind of like everybody that I knew, all my friends were like, oh my God, you're an actor and you're on Broadway. I mean, right. this pinnacle. And for me, it was like, I just was like, yeah, I guess. I mean, it seemed like, um, well, I mean, you know that it wasn't my Broadway debut, right? You know that. You know, I I'm, oh, I'm in the original um, cast of South Pacific and The Sound of Music. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, no, it was my day. Climbing every mountain. <laughs> I'm, I'm 14. Um, <laughs> what did I mean by climbing every mountain? I don't know. <laughs> but Broadway's Calling is all about the first time in forging your path. And we have had a couple of other trailblazers. Allie Ewalt was Broadway's first Asian American Christine on Broadway and uh, in The Phantom of the Opera. And... Um, Jose Lana, there's Allie right there. Um, Jose Lana is the first actor to originate Lunta in one revival of King and I and return as the actual king in the revival of King and I. Um, but someone who um, I was working with in The Visitor, Ari Stachel, he won a Tony for his very first Broadway performance in The Band Visit. <laughs> I know that it was very exciting when Ari was on the show because Julie is of Middle, Middle Eastern um, descent. And um, it, was, it was actually an emotional time when she was here. And you don't realize that representation matters. You know, having a Muslim American win a Tony, you know, standing up there before everyone uh, when he didn't even think that it was possible for that to uh, happen for him. Um, but uh, that particular show is yes. something that I know. Oh, there you are, Julie. Hi. <laughs> I was just telling them how that you are of Middle Eastern descent and how important that was, uh, that representation mattered when you saw that Ari won uh, a Tony and for his first Broadway performance. I mean, it was amazing. I'm an Amer Arab, Arab American actor and um, the visitor cast reunion show was just very, very special to me. I think, I think we all got a little bit choked up throughout the course of that show. I know yeah. David Hyde Pierce did, Ari yeah. did, I did. We all just had a lot to talk about. And, you know, it was at the time where sort of the idea of representation was really bubbling up as something very important in our business mm -hmm. and in our industry. And so it was just a really incredible, wonderful conversation to have with them. And it meant the world to me that he was there because I don't get to see my people on stage very often. So it was really, no, but it was really more. special. More yep. and more, and uh, we have uh, we have a very diverse uh, cast of the visitor to, uh, when we uh, come back at the public. And, I can't wait to um, see it. It's based on the film uh, that Richard Jenkins starred in, Tom McCarthy, who I think has a new movie out uh, that he wrote and directed uh, with um, oh man, uh, 
Oh, I, I'll figure out his name in a second, but it's one of the new, I think maybe it might be Stillwater or something, Matt Damon. Um, it's one of the two movies that Matt, Matt, Matt Damon has coming out. Uh, but yeah, it's a fascinating story, um, just about how people come together from different worlds, uh, which we're constantly doing. And um, especially in this time where we've been isolated and we're just trying to find that common ground because we see that we're all in this together. Like they say on High School Musical. That's we're right. All we're all in this, in this together. together. I mean, how, how do we both know that song? That's really I depressing. know, because High School <laughs> Musical is good. I'm looking forward to the series. I don't care who knows. I think it's wholesome entertainment and I enjoy it. So. It's fun. I've directed High School Musical, the musical. Really? I yeah. love it. It's I a lot of fun. It. It's a great little can't, show. Can't wait to see it. And Jordan Fisher, who um, I guess he enjoys it too, and he had tweeted about it, and now he's actually going to be in the show. And Jordan Fisher is the first African American to play um, the star in Dear Evan Hansen on Broadway. And he is returning with the show uh, when they return this fall. So that's very, very exciting. It is um, very exciting. The show that we did with The Visitor was also special because it was the first time that we featured a Broadway stage manager, James Latis, and he was a guest. And we also featured someone from the creative staff, um, which I really want to get more of that, more of the directors and choreographers and uh, the costume people and the set designers. Um, I follow several of them who I've worked with on Instagram and they're great artists. And it's, it's, it's fascinating to see how they come up with things. And we had on our show, Waitress's choreographer, Lauren Lataro, and it was just exciting, you know, just to talk to someone in the creative staff who, you know, like, what are they thinking when we come back? You know, is she coming up with new steps to social distance or, you know, what is she, you know, it's just so it's very, very exciting. Yeah. Um, I also, I can't believe how many Tony nominees and how many winners we had on this show. I mean, they were just very funny and charming and yeah. super inspirational. <laughs> like anyone who loved theater as a kid just wanted to win that Tony award. So getting to watch all these people talk about, how they won or how they were nominated and what it meant to them. It was pretty amazing to have all of them as guests. You know, my, my favorite one was, I mean, it's like, I love Tony Award speeches. I love any speeches. It's like, because, you know, people don't realize that someone's like, oh, you like me, you really like me, like Sally mm -hmm. Field says. Uh, but I loved it when Chuck Cooper, who was in the light with Lilius White, and they both won, but he won for playing this, like, excuse my French, just badass pimp. And I'm yeah. not going to sing the lyrics to his song, but because you know they're they're really not for prime time. But he was phenomenal, and he was scary as his part. <laughs> but man, Chuck turned into the biggest kid when he won that Tony Award, and well, you have to check this out. Oh uh, gosh, oh man, this is awesome! I won a Tony. Oh. <laughs> 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 That's just the best. I mean, I, isn't it? I mean, and if you know Chuck, I mean, whether for television and film or or Broadway, I mean, nothing's gonna throw Chuck. But I could just tell he was like, oh my goodness, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, they all graciously thank the American Theater Wing, and we would like to thank our Tony winners who have been on Broadway's Calling, uh, from Victoria Clark to David Hyde Pierce. Um, Ari Stotchel, Brian Stokes Mitchell, Anthony Crivello, Donna McKechnie, Laura Benanti, Lilius White, uh, Chuck Cooper, Donna Murphy, and Glenn Close. They all joined us. I mean, we talking about royalty. We had them here. And I really, 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 really thank uh, them for stopping by and sharing their Broadway's Calling stories and usually their Tony Award winning speech we had to show. So it was now very, very good. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. What? How's it going behind you there with, Aunt, with Andrea? How's that Andrea? going? Yes. How is it going? It's going how's it fabulous. going? <laughs> <laughs> She's stirring something. Uh, yeah. So wait, good. you're actually making the bread from scratch? Oh, this is the ricotta cheese. Oh, what's in that? So you've got a little bit of You can bring the bowl up to the... It's yeah, bring it a little closer. Honey. I'll get out yeah. and let Andrea get in there. It's got a little bit of honey and salt pepper. It's really simple. You just got to whip it up. And then 
mama. I Yummy. Oh. I used this for eat, all eat, kinds eat, of eat. goodies. Yeah. Like yeah. Get my camera in there. Can I get my fingers in there? <laughs> <laughs> We're almost <laughs> done here. <too. laughs> It's like, oh, it's almost done. So, you know, we're going to have to go and start our celebrating here. And then you guys have to go celebrate, too, and make sure that you tell everyone, you know, to come watch the show because we'll be we'll, we'll party here. And, of course, donate uh, to us so that we can send some more donations to the Actors Fund before we, like, you know, the curtain comes down on Broadway's Calling 1.0. Um, all of yeah, that. Yeah, but can, can we talk about, like, some of the bloopers, some of the like crazy stuff that what, happened what during this. No, no this show. we were perfect every single show. Every, every show like, was perfect. It was like today. We were just on time and everything was set up. We don't have bloopers here. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. But you as the tech uh, producer probably notice a few more than even I, because I'm just like talking, talking, yeah. talking. What were some of your favorites? Oh, I, I think it would have to be one of my, one of my absolute favorites was Lilius White's episode because oh. um, she was like, I don't know where she was. She was out somewhere where like her internet was not the strongest. Mm -hmm. And I had just gotten back to Los Angeles from San Francisco when, I, but I had not been in Los Angeles for two years because I yeah. had been on the road with Come From Away. Mm -hmm. And then when the pandemic was happening at the beginning, I was in San Francisco. So mm -hmm. my very first day back in Los Angeles was a Broadway's Calling Show Day. Oh, right. Yes. Right. And I did not realize that my internet in Los Angeles and my area of Los Angeles, which is Studio mm -hmm. City, was not strong enough to oh. broadcast the show. Mm -hmm. So it was a combination of Lilius not having good broadcasting, like, um, you know, uh, what are they called? VARs. And I didn't have good Wi-Fi. And I also didn't have a, a direct hookup at that point. So between the two of us, it was like, I mean, it was like Max Headroom. You just had no, <laughs> if anyone knows who Max Headroom is. But like, it was like this staticky, like weird, like you couldn't. It was that show was such a mess, and I'm so. And then Val, Val um, uh, Valerie Pettiford, Val Pettiford. Oh, that was good. Oh, but wait, on the Lilius one, do you remember? Like, like her internet kept going out, but because I've known Lilius for so long, I would ask her a question, and her in, her internet would go out, and then I'd answer the question. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, you know. So what was your favorite, your 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 first Broadway show? She'd go away, and I said, well. Because I know when you first started that show, you did this, this, and this. It was so, it was crazy. And then when I showed a clip from How to Succeed in Business with with her scatting as Miss Jones, that's right. That video went out. That was fine. And I, and I was like, Lilius, sing for us. And she was like, Oh no, baby, I'm not singing for you. You know, <laughs> I was. And I don't blame her. You know, at these prices. You know, this free.com. She was like, I'm not doing a number. So as she was doing it and it was silent, it was like I was at the silent movie. I was like, Bop, but you didn't and we come yeah. on. Oh. <laughs> because uh like everybody else, we watched Lilius White between that and her um funny girl, don't rain on my parade. Oh, yeah, oh, from the actress yeah. fun benefit concert was amazing. Oh. I mean, you know, I know. no, no gaps there. <laughs> um, and there were, I mean, and we also, we got some live singing from Valerie Pettiford. You were going to talk about Valerie, which that went smooth, but earlier in that broadcast, do you remember what happened? Well, is this the one where you kept, I remember when we were rehearsing, you kept being concerned that you were going to call her by a different name. Oh God. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Because we have, we both have a friend who's also named Valerie and her last yes. name starts with a P and yes. she was a Broadway star as well, but Val, Val Perry. So you have right. Val Pettiford and you have Val Perry, two very different women. Val yes. Perry starred as Evita yeah. and, and Val Pettiford is like Fosse's, you know, yes. right hand goddess. Right. So you have these two women and, and every time we were rehearsing it, you kept saying Val Perry and I'm like, it's Val Pettiford. We have to make sure. Oh, that's my timer. <laughs> oh, oh my God, we gotta talk faster. <laughs> yeah, we do. 
So like it was it was just it was just a lot of fun. We're we're 50 minutes into the show by the way, just so oh, you know. Well, I haven't had the chance you. to text. Oh, You're well, welcome, sir. You. Um, well, um, <laughs> but we'll uh, get, you know, to some of these good things then, but those are funny funny uh, oh, uh yeah. gaps there and um, I'm glad that the tech goddesses they were having fun with us then, but they're you know, playing and they were having fun with us today, but we, oh, we yeah. worked it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope all of you out there are enjoying. I mean, whatever. I mean, it's just sort of fun here. You know, we're we're, we're loose. We're we're we haven't even started, you know, really having the champagne yet. Um, uh, I'm going to wait until Andrea actually has something to have champagne with. So I don't pass out because I've only had a banana. You know, this is California. They don't have food out here. Y'all, they got avocado. Hey. We've got really good produce out here. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, you got produce. I'm talking about we need a steak or something. And seafood. We have good seafood. You do. It's great. Well, um, well, well. Thank you, Julie, for sharing those uh, those tech gaps. Um, I just wanted to like talk to you um, out there about some of the the great people who have come in for some of our specials. And um, my signature party each year is the Brotherhood Buffet to celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday. And I usually have people over to my house or at the theater and ask everyone to bring in a dish to share from their ethnic background or where they grew up. And now this picture that you're looking at, that was one of the first ones at Aladdin that I did at California Adventure. And uh, that's where we really sort of started doing it backstage. And it's made its way all the way to Broadway. Um, and we've done it with Glenn Close in the cast of Sunset Boulevard. Oh, there we are. Uh, and uh, I love that cast. Um, and we were very close. We, we still hang together now. Um, also, we did it at My Fair Lady. Um, but this year during the lockdown, I took the Brotherhood Buffet virtual. And I asked my Broadway friends to share their cultural heritage with us. And uh, you can see the entire episode because we're, we're getting ready to wrap up and, and get to those fun uh, uh, things that I said, I promise at the end of the show. Uh, but you can watch it on youtube.com forward slash Broadway's Calling. And there's a poster of the Martin Luther King uh, Brotherhood Buffet that we had that was virtual. And you can see it. And it's so much fun to see uh, people talk about their ethnic heritage and the foods that were in their family. And um, and it's one of those episodes you want to jump right into the screen because everything looks so tasty. And uh, Carly Hughes, she had two things because she's like St. Louis and Maryland. So you can imagine barbecue and crabs. That's what I'm just saying. Not together, but they were both delicious. Um, so I'd like to thank those stars and Harada. Manu Narayan, Carly Hughes, Cleo King, Didi Magno, Sharina Med, and Johnny Orsini for dishing up all of that, those delicious dishes to celebrate MLK Day on the Broadway's Calling Brotherhood Buffet. Now, if you haven't already figured out the star who has yet to have her Broadway call, but has been a series regular, these are more clues, series regular on Mike and Molly on uh, CBS, also Sons of Anarchy, the Broadway tour of Jelly's Last Jam, and the films Pineapple Express, The Hangover, Dreamgirls. Well, this person is going to make a Broadway debut this fall, and that is none other than... Broadway's Calling, Cleo King. That's it. That's my friend Cleo. She's making a Broadway debut. And you've seen her in all the movies and all of television. She was the grandmother on Mike and Molly. She can play any range. Um, she's not as old as she plays, but I'm here to tell you, I can't show the picture, but she sent me a picture of her character in Chicken and Biscuits. And you definitely want to see that. Uh, Julie, did you happen to have the um, the poster from Chicken and Biscuits with Norman? You know what? I thought I did, but it apparently hasn't quite loaded. So I can pull it oh. up a little bit later, but I oh, didn't. Okay. I, it didn't load properly into the system this time. So look at that! Oh. Another, just in time for our closing show. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> it's all right. But but you guys just Google chicken and biscuits. I don't know anything about the play, but I know there are some funny people in it. Very talented people, like I said, Cleo's in it, Natasha Vet Williams, Norm Lewis, and Michael Yuri. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Um, I, it just sounds like one of those things where. 
uh, it's a family, a funeral home. That's what could go wrong. Right. right. <laughs> so now I'm, I thought you were talking about me being on our Halloween special, Cadaver Ray. That's what I thought you were talking no, about. No, 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 no. Because I knew that you had done the tour of Come From Away, uh, and Cad Cadaver Ray was created uh, to help some organizations like the Moonlight Amphitheater on the West Coast and Gamic on the East Coast. So as a fundraiser, I thought we had some leeway. So I really wasn't like you know, holding people to, you know, you had to be on Broadway for the show because um, I, I'm a big fan of Randy Rainbow and I would love to have him on the show, but he hasn't been on Broadway yet, so he can't be on the show. So producers out there, put Randy Rainbow in a show so we can have him on the show. Can you imagine how much fun that would be? Well, um, I know for a fact that they are working on it. Oh, ooh, that I've got good. some inside scoop. I know they're working See? on it. There we go. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, but now the Cadaver Ray show is an unlisted show because it was done for the charities. But there are a couple of numbers that I have put on our page because um, of the channel. It's it's up in perpetuity. So you can see any of this at any time, including this show. It will be you know loaded on YouTube right after that. But you can see uh, Ben Fankhouse's number when he does Feed Me. Charles Brown does a number from The Lion King. Lion King. And, and Holly Butler, mm, she does a very, very sexy number uh, from Cats. And I'd like to thank the rest of the cast, Chester Gregory, L. Steven Taylor, Brian Carson, Juliana Hansen, and a little slightly dark side of Broadway's Lady Diana, Miss Gina DeWall, who will be returning to Broadway, not only live in Diana, but also on Netflix um in the film version of diana and also in september they recorded the album and that's also coming out so Very cool. i look forward to all that you can see uh with uh diana but you can see a preview of gina dewall if you um if you like look around on our page maybe okay <laughs> but um there are some great videos um I also in that cadaver ray of like Olivia Ogama, um, Austin Koo is on it, Will Vote, uh, Elena Waters, and Mike Portella. Um, and they went perfect with Andrea's vampire cookies. Were they vampire cookies or Dracula? Cookies? Oh, yeah. No, they were vampire. Oh, they there they are. <laughs> those look so <laughs> gross. They look so, I mean, look at how gross those are. But so tasty. So, so yeah. Good. Super, no. Like the fangs and the like the blood <laughs> pouring out. I just, they're so nasty. Yeah, but if you do want to make them this Halloween, you can check out that video um, uh, in uh, in a couple of our, uh, well, I don't, actually, you can't check that out. That's a, it's a lie. We remember we're going to do a show about all the things that I say that really aren't true. This um, is one of them. This is I one know. of them. You can't I, we need a that. fact checker. We need we a fact checker for this show. Next checker. next iteration, version yeah. two. Yeah. We're getting a fact checker. Who wants to be the Broadway's calling fact checker? <laughs> it's like you can have that job because you can't see that. But that recipe will be on our website and it'll be on the drop down of the Broadway Bites. We're gonna try and get all the websites, but a couple of them are up there now, but we're gonna try and get those on there. That is for tr uh, for yeah. sure, broadwayscallingtv.com. And any recipe or things that you haven't seen, um, because a lot of the recipes tie into the shows. So if you love shows or if you're in a show, maybe you can check those recipes and see if there's something that you can make or get for your cast. So just check at broadwayscallingtv.com. And now, speaking of sweets and good recipes, how are things coming along, Andrea? Things are fabulous. What yes. what do you got? I smell something. I smell something. Oh, oh my god. My oh my god. Favorites. What is it? Is she are you done? <laughs> okay. Let's see. What is that? It's the flowerless brownie. Flowerless oh. brownie. Now that was inspired by a, a mean show. Girl. Mean Girls, the Calteen Bar. Jonathan. Which Saxer. Yes, Jonathan Saxer came over. She did a fabulous workout for us. Mm -hmm. So we had to do the opposite of a Calteen bar. Right. Right. So this is our version. It's super healthy. 
and you should check out the recipe. And my ass, you have to try it. Okay. okay. I guess I'll have to. I mean, since I'm here, you know, um, I need to like have a little piece. You like nuts or no nuts? Uh, just with some nuts in it. Of that's course. good because then that's fiber. So it's like it's healthy, right? So, all right. This is Andrea's flourless brownie. I'm right here, guys. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Thank you and good night. No. No, I'm, I, somebody come out here. I want a brownie. Okay. Well, someone need- will give you one soon. But y'all, this is really so good. Mm, this is good. Okay. Can you even tell there's black beans in that? What? <laughs> That's the black bean one. Oh, black somebody beans. Someone to run a brownie out to me. Come on, people. I want a brownie. Someone, what are you trying to be healthy? <laughs> it's fabulous, you know, right? Well, you have to check out this recipe because it is so good. And I know um, some of you are not only gluten free, but you're just really, really. I'm gonna have you know some some good goodness in your desserts. Well, Andrea has figured out how to do it, and I did not know that was made with black beans. Now I love black beans, so I'm a little excited about it. Um, and then oh, Eileen Graff says, oh, she came to one of the um, um, oh the Brotherhood buffets. Yes, you did. Oh my God, that was so good. Oh my goodness. Um, Well, you guys, this is so, so good. Now, what you did promise me, and I don't know if you made this because I didn't know what was going on in the kitchen, was rosemary shortbread. I did make it for you. Oh, my goodness. She's been in this kitchen. And y'all, this is the kitchen to cook in. I'm just saying, this is a good cooking kitchen right here. Oh, my God. There it is. Can you see the rosemary shortbread? Ah, look at that. Mm. Yes. Which it reminds me of Rosemary Harris. <laughs> I'm very, and I'm going to try that. You know, if you need me to try that for everybody out there, I'm going to try this for you guys so that um, now I like. So it's like savory sweet. Oh, savory. Perfect. Let's see. Come on. Oh, come on. Mm. You know come what? on. You know what? Okay. This needs a little Martinelli, <laughs> sparkling, apple juice. And this is good, y'all. Oh, I like the little crystallized sugar on the top. Can y'all see that? A little crystallized sugar. Uh, we, got, we got a comment I want to share, please. Okay. Oh, what is that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Please pitch one of those out the window with Julie before (laughs) she fades away. (laughs) Mm. And then Sass and Such said, chocolate comes from cocoa beans on a tree and with the black beans in it makes us technically like a bean salad. You are correct. Those brownies are vegetables. That's that's a vegetable, a serving of vegetables. Absolutely. 100%. Vanilla bean? So you've got like those tri-bean salads now. Yeah, so, it's, know, a, it's a it's a three-bean a salad. Three-bean salad. Yes. Three salad. Oh, well, this super, is Super, so super healthy. Well, wait a minute. Oh, I thought this was like something. No, this is a good, this is a good glass because y'all, Andre Boyer does not play. <laughs> she is not only here for Broadway Bites, but she's like our lifestyle. And so now you have to stay tuned for when we do Broadway's Call in 2.0, and we're out in the street. And Andrea actually gets to go to the restaurants in the Broadway area. And she talks about the stars who eat there and talks to some of the chefs and gets some of their um, great, great ideas. And Julie, you were going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, Andrea, start fixing me a plate. I'm coming in there. Oh, I think, I think your it's manager coming is coming over. But before we toast to our audience and all oh, of yay. you... All of you who donated so generously to the Actors Fund uh, using the Venmo or the PayPal, um, it gets to them either way. Um, I'd like to say that I really, I love your suggestions for all the stars that you want to come to see on the show, come to be on the show. I really love the, it just, I just love like, oh, that person, I love that person. Um, And I couldn't get everyone on, 
because we it's only a year, but we did get like over 50 people, which is exciting. But I'd like to thank the guests who did come on from this incarnation and who are willing to sit down with me. And if you were a regular viewer, you probably figured out that all of the guests were friends who I actually met while performing around the country. It was sort of like our secret weapon. And, um, and to tell you the honest God truth, it was my security blanket. It really was. I just thought like, you know, while we were locked down, you know, I got to be with friends. I got to be with people who I knew. Um, there were dynamite people to, to talk to, but every time one of uh, the guests would be on the show, I would forget about the world around me. And I'm hoping that while you were watching, you would forget about the world around you and be reminded about the gloriousness of the entertainment that can be created on all the stages across the world, uh, not only Broadway, because I always say Broadway is everywhere. Um, and um, so I'm really, really excited about that. And uh, right now, now that I've been through that, I'm ready for my close up, Mr. DeMille. I just hope Mr. DeMille has a streaming service so we can put the close up on it. That's what I'm saying. So, um, Everyone out there, I remind you, please share and follow us to keep up with the developments. And uh, there are some episodes that are absolute gems that I didn't get to talk about with the likes of Brittany Coleman and Vasti Mompoint and Stephen Truman Gray, Jessica Rush, Jennifer Sanchez, Pearl Sun, Darius DeHaas, Drew Powell, Broadway veterans who you met here today, um, Eileen Graff, Leslie Kritzer, Tony nominees, Rob McClure. Pam Myers and Mary Testa and my Broadway partner in dreams. And I'll get emotional because, you know, we started out at 15 years old and we said we wanted to be on Broadway and we got to do it. And um, and that's my dearest friend, Donna Murphy. <laughs> there we were as kids. And it's like whenever I talk about our dreams together, it always gets me um, because, you know, when you're kids, you think like you can do anything, um, even if things are outside of your reach. Um, but I'm here to tell you, like dreams do come true. And um, and there she is. Uh, I just I I love being with her, and and I love when we're together and we can discuss. You're like, oh my goodness, let's pinch each other because this is not only happening; it's still happening, and it's been happening for us for so long. And. Uh, uh, and she got to be on the show, the second show. Um, and um, I'm just glad that I, I get to share this with you, that the stars get to share this with you. And um, I know there are so many people to thank. Um, and uh, Julie, are there people who you wanna thank who have helped you? Um, I know Ruby is one of them. Over Ruby Lochner, 100%, 1,000%. Mm -hmm. She is sort of my guru for all things technology when it comes mm -hmm. to streaming on and doing virtual events. Um, Ruby has taught me everything I know. I wouldn't have met Ruby if it weren't for Jim Caruso mm -hmm. and for Victoria Shaw, who is her mother. Mm -hmm. um, and she raised that little girl right. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we, I have to thank our manager, um, I have to thank uh, Niall Brenner because mm -hmm. he's really been sort of through this whole process with, with us from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to thank Stuart Shulman because mm -hmm. he also has been with us through this process since the beginning. He's really, since day one, he thought this was a great idea and he's mm -hmm. been supporting us and helping us throughout. So um, also, of course, um, Andrea and Al Boyer, um, you guys have just been so much fun to work with and so great. And I just love you guys. And, uh, and you Lance for entrusting me with the show and bringing this idea to me and, and, you know, on that crazy zoom call that one day a year yeah. ago, you know, like, well, a little bit over a year ago, you said, Oh, I have this idea for a show. And I'm like, I can do it. Just <laughs> write me a script. Just, I write a script. I will do it for you. I will do mm -hmm. it for you. And the fact that we've gotten through an entire year of 50 Broadway stars and, and so many shows and so many laughs and so many bloopers and dogs and families. And <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just been a lot of, it's been a lot of fun and I'm going to really miss it. It's a bittersweet moment because we're, we're coming to the end here and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm going to miss this a lot. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And you, Andrea? Gosh, Lance, I just want to thank you. Like seriously, from the bottom of my heart, mm -hmm. because I didn't think that I, 
I don't know, I don't even know how to put it in words, but the possibility of just little old me helping you out on the show, I don't think you realize how honored I felt uh, and special. Like, okay, we gotta go because it now we're I was just excited to see your show and know that you were doing something when you asked, invited me to be a part of it. I mean, it was like mind blowing. So, and I love it. But the it. side note, you have to know that Andre and I, this is what we do when she and Al come to you New York. You guys eat. Yeah. We eat. We, we love food love all food. over the city. And so this was such a natural thing for us to do. And, and shopping, too. And That's shopping, a whole yes. other. Yeah. <laughs> but it was so nice because I'm not... I'm not some grandiose chef or anything of that nature, but I do enjoy what I know what to make. And, it, mm -hmm. and it's usually little fun foods that make people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. and, I beg to differ. Uh, you are a grandiose. And everyone's asked, oh, thank you. <laughs> and these are, you the are roasted uh, pear and ricotta. Oh. These have garlic and these don't. So I'm not right. sure what okay. you like. I want the garlic. This is what, that's what they look like. Well, sorry, it's because it's kind of hard. <laughs> so these okay. crostini with pear and goat cheese. It's a uh, ricotta cheese. Ricotta cheese. Yeah. Mm. It's the ricotta with the honey that she was just mixing up, right? Oh my goodness. I cannot wait. You guys. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for hosting us. Oh. This really I've been wanting to hug this man for a long time. Okay. <laughs> so I'm doing it. You're doing it. Lance, um, I, can I just can I just mention a few more people? Yes, please. I think we need to talk about our, our, our back end crew. I think we need to talk about the Andrews and the Andes and everybody who was a part of this from the very beginning and who have, yes. you know, just been so amazing with our website and our social media. And if you could just say their names, I think yeah. that's Andrew really, it's really good. Who has been over there at the Instagram, Andy Skirna, who is a webmaster, who he will just keep putting things out. So if you got an email, you can thank Andy for that. Um, um, so it's very, very exciting to just have these people help us. And, you know, even like, you know, Austin Koo has, you know, helped, you know, a couple of times where if we had a contest and we had to be on several devices to trying to figure out how to get people their prizes and, and win gifts and things like that, that's been fantastic. And then really, all of you, when you're doing these shows on the internet, they only work with the viewers. And that's what's so exciting. That's why I love reading the comments um, because that's the real show. We just create the, comment, uh, the, the content, but you are really the show. And it's so much uh, to our, thank you, Phineas. He said, you've added so much to our Broadway community. Um, but it really is the audience that just really creates the community, creates the excitement. And we see, you know, that it, it goes from continent to continent uh, of all these people who love entertainment and they love the stars. And, um, and I have uh, been striving to create a show where Actually, you get in-depth interviews with Broadway stars because no one really does that. You know, there's lots of things, you know, for 60 Minutes or what have you for TV people and movie people. Uh, but it's the Broadway people who are doing it day in and day out, eight shows a week, unless they're a really big star. Then it's only seven shows. Um, <laughs> but it's like they're really in there and they're really connecting with the audiences. And um, I personally... When I'm in a show, oh man, I hate this. But when I'm in a show that has gotten like maybe not great reviews and I've done a couple of them and the audiences love it anyway, that's when I know that it's important. They don't care if it's the, the right show to see, the best show to see. All they know is that they're having a shared experience at the same time with not only the people on the stage, but the people in the audience. And they love, they go out to the restaurants, you know, that, you know, we love to go to after the shows and, and discuss it. And it's like every corner, it's like, and when you're in New York, it's thrilling because you can hear about theater in all kinds of places. And I find that thrilling. And I think that we have a place here where we can continue that even if we're not in a building. And, you know, all of, most of us, we don't see like lots of shows each year. Maybe we only see one or two shows. Well, hopefully Broadway's Calling will continue to be here so that you can have the experience anytime you want to on our channel or live when we come back or wherever we land with Broadway's Calling. 
2.0. Um, so here's a toast to you all out there, Andrea, to Julie out there in the tech booth by the pool, no less. Um, and um, Julie, I know that you can't really, um, you know, hit the buttons, but I don't know if you do. You want to run in here? And, I do. And like, you know, be in the shot. Um, and in the meantime, while Julie is coming over here, I just want to say to all of you, uh, stay in touch and leave us messages, uh, you know, comments under the shows, but stay safe. And even though, you know, you were vaccinated, some of us, and, you know, it, still we want to socially distance ourselves just in case, you know, give it six months so we can see how it all works out. Um, we can be cautious. And, um, wear your mask, um, indoors, different things. But um, I think, Julie, you want to come right in here in the middle? Yeah. There's Julie. Yay! We're happy yes. together. Oh, hi. my God. OK. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, stay safe. Stay sane. Keep a little Broadway in your life. I'm Lance Roberts. I'm Julie Garnier, Andrea Boyer. Oh, and as we turn a page in internet history, I leave you with some history with theater royalty. In a second, you will see Dame Rosemary Harris. So there's Julie, she's running to give it to you, but I really want you to give it a listen. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a rare audio. I'm so glad I captured it on my phone. Uh, but you guys, it's gold. It really is gold. And um, so are you. So cheers to you. Uh, cheers, and now we can drink a little. Mm. I hope you all have a little drink out there. And um, I leave you, Broadway's calling, peace. I was standing on a stage with a script in my hand, and I was reading this is in England, in, England, in London, in a London theatre, and I was helping somebody with their audition mm -hmm. for Moss Hart. And Moss Hart gave him the job, mm -hmm. and he beckoned me over to the footlights and mm -hmm. said, I've got so used to hearing you play the part. Would you like to come too? To Broadway. Yes. How old were you? I'm 20, 21. Oh. And had you been to America no. before? Yes. And how were your parents about? My parents had died. My mother died when I was 14. My father died when I was 20. So I had a wonderful grandmother mm -hmm. and a great aunt mm -hmm. and two wonderful sisters. Mm -hmm. One eight years older and yeah. one eight years younger. And the one older had already gone. He went to drama school. Drama school. Okay. So I got on the Queen Mary, the first Queen uh -huh. Mary. Flew steer, I mean, steerage. <laughs> and I took my ca cabin trunk, mm -hmm. uh, all my sheets and pots and pans, and everything I owned, because I didn't have a place right. in England. Brought everything I owned on the, in that cabin trunk. And the show came in, <laughs> sailed into the Martin Beck, and uh -huh. closed after two weeks. <laughs> What show is that? It was Moss Hart's play called oh, The Climate of Eden. Oh, that was The Climate of Eden. And he wrote it. And Earl Hyman was in it. When oh, really? He was a baby. Oh, my goodness. And Jane White. Jane White, wow. They were, they were kids. Mm -hmm. They were kids. Right. Yeah, I remember Jane White. She was the... Um, uh, wasn't she the queen? Yes. In, uh, yes, I remember seeing that on television when I was little. Oh, man. And so... Did you, friends with 